Cold killed more soldiers in World War II than bullets did. Entire divisions froze to death in Russia, in the Ardennes, and in the highlands of Norway, not because they lacked courage, but because their bodies simply gave out. The cold wasn't just an enemy, it was a predator. But, you know, hidden in the chaos of war was a survival trick so effective that it quietly saved thousands. It wasn't high-tech clothing, it wasn't fancy equipment, it was fat. Soldiers from the Eastern Front to the Pacific Mountains learned that fat wasn't just food. It was fuel, insulation, and life itself. And today, that same forgotten hack still applies to anyone facing freezing conditions, whether hiking, camping, or preparing for grid-down winters. Soldiers discovered that calories could be armour against the cold. By 1942, both the German and Soviet armies had learned the brutal truth about winter warfare. Hunger and cold were one and the same. Fat, being more calorie-dense than protein or carbohydrates, provided over 9 calories per gram, more than double the energy of other food sources. That really mattered when rations were short and temperatures were below zero. Soldiers learned that eating fat-rich foods before sleep or patrol helped their bodies maintain internal heat through the night. On the Eastern Front, German troops began hoarding butter, lard, and even rendered animal grease. Soviet partisans did the same, surviving on slabs of pork fat known as salo. It wasn't gourmet food. It was survival rations. The fat slowed digestion, keeping the body's metabolic furnace burning steadily for hours. British commandos stationed in Norway and the Arctic used similar tactics, consuming concentrated pemmican, a mix of dried meat and fat, to endure sub-zero winds while carrying out sabotage missions against German shipping lines. Modern science backs this up. When the body is fed fats, especially saturated ones, it generates more internal heat through a process called diet-induced thermogenesis. In other words, World War II soldiers weren't guessing. They were adapting through hard-earned experience. Fat became a tool, not just a meal. What most people don't realize is that soldiers use fat outside their bodies too. Lard, tallow, and grease became survival tools in the field. Troops rubbed it on boots to waterproof them, applied it to skin to prevent frostbite, and even coated rifle parts to stop freezing. Arctic explorers before the war had done the same, smearing a layer of animal fat over exposed skin as primitive but effective insulation. A U.S. Army report from the 10th Mountain Division mentioned soldiers melting bacon grease and rubbing it on their hands before night sentries. It created a thin, greasy layer that trapped body heat and prevented moisture from freezing instantly on the skin. Others mixed fat with ashes to make an improvised soap, cleaning gear and skin without stripping natural oils, a crucial detail when cracks and frostbite could end a mission. For civilians or survivalists today, that translates into practical methods. Carrying a tin of animal fat, coconut oil or beeswax can act as both food and protection. Smear a thin layer on your face, neck and ears in extreme cold. It's not pleasant, but it works. Even melting fat onto leather gloves or boots forms a hydrophobic barrier that keeps snowmelt from seeping in. Field rations were re-engineered around fat for endurance. As the war dragged on, armies adjusted their rations. Early in the conflict, American K rations were criticized for being too light in calories and too low in fat. Soldiers complained of exhaustion in freezing conditions. By 1944, 
The US military revised them to include richer components, cheese spreads, chocolate bars high in cocoa butter, and canned meats packed in lard. The same happened with British and Canadian rations in Europe, where high-fat biscuits, margarine, and tinned stew became standard cold-weather fare. The lesson was clear. Carbohydrates gave quick energy, but fats provided staying power. Troops who ate fatty meals could patrol longer, sleep warmer, and wake up without the shaking chill that others faced. For modern preppers, hikers, and cold-weather workers, this principle remains vital. Before entering prolonged cold, eat something high in fats, peanut butter, nuts, butter, or fatty meats. The slow release of energy helps maintain core body temperature far more effectively than sugar spikes. How to use the WW3 fat hack today? For anyone preparing for cold survival, whether a camper, hunter, or someone living in off-grid conditions, the WW3 fat method is still gold. Before bed in freezing weather, consume a small handful of high-fat food bacon nuts or a spoonful of coconut oil. It sustains body heat overnight. Keep a container of rendered fat, like lard or tallow, as part of your kit. It doubles as cooking oil, skin barrier, boot sealant, or even fire starter when mixed with cloth. Another method borrowed from partisans and mountaineers is the fat candle. Melt animal fat in a tin and insert a strip of cloth as a wick. It can burn for hours, producing steady warmth and light. During Waiti, this was common in bunkers and trenches when heating fuel ran out. Even today, it's one of the most efficient, low-tech heat sources you can make with scraps. If your gear gets wet, rubbing fat into leather or canvas can extend its waterproofing by days. Soldiers did this with tent edges, gloves, and rifle slings. It's messy, but it can mean the difference between staying functional or freezing. The war may be over, but the principle hasn't changed. In every corner of WP's frozen battlefields, survival hinged on knowledge, not just equipment. Fat was the unspoken weapon. Energy, insulation and protection rolled into one. Soldiers who understood its value outlasted the cold, while those who didn't often paid the ultimate price. Today's world may be far removed, from those battlefronts, but the body hasn't changed. Whether you're facing a winter storm, a grid-down emergency, or a long expedition, fat remains nature's built-in defence against the cold. So the next time you prepare for freezing weather, remember the forgotten W2 lesson. Warmth doesn't always come from a jacket. It can come from what's fueling your body. If you value practical survival knowledge grounded in real history, hit subscribe and share this video. Every week, In the Beginning digs deeper into the forgotten field tricks and wartime wisdom that still apply today. Lessons born from the hardest conditions humans have ever faced.